Hi and welcome to the Gayest Week in Sports. I'm Sid Ziegler from Outsports.com. Every week I'm going to count down the five gayest sports headlines of the week. And I call it the Gayest Week in Sports because the way this year is going, every week is getting gayer and gayer in sports. And now with all due respect to the lesbian, bisexual, transgender, intersex, asexual friends of mine, I call it the Gayest Week in Sports because the LGBTQQIAPPPS Week in Sports just doesn't quite sound right. The fifth gayest sports story of the week features the Minnesota Vikings running back and defending NFL MVP Adrian Peterson, who last week said that he is not with gay marriage. For some reason, it took about a week for the mainstream media to pick up on it. In addition to saying he's not with gay marriage, uh, Peterson said that he has gay friends, gay relatives, and he regrets that the Minnesota Vikings let LGBT activist Chris Cluey be released. I don't know how you have gay friends and gay family members that say you love them and you cherish them, but that you're against their ability to have equal rights as you. It's a place that a lot of people are ending up, particularly in sports. Uh, it's great to see that Peterson would, in all likelihood, welcome a gay teammate, but it's pretty disappointing to see that he thinks that it's a legitimate position to be against my ability to marry my partner of 10 years. Call me crazy. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because Minnesota has same-sex marriage whether Adrian Peterson likes it or not. The fourth gayest sports story of the week features two other NFL players on the other side of the coin. Indianapolis Colts quarterback Andrew Luck said to CNN that not only would he embrace an openly gay teammate, but he would be angry at any of his straight teammates who didn't embrace a gay teammate. Well, I mean, it's the 21st century, and uh, you know, I know I would have absolutely no problem with it. Um, I wouldn't treat him. Any, I hope no one would treat him any differently than any, than any straight player. You know, no special treatment. He's another guy, another part of it, and uh, I wouldn't. It's none of our business. You know, sexual preference of people. Uh, so. You know, I hope if someone's thinking about it, that, that, and that if, if, if they do come out as gay and, and are a professional football player and it makes them happier and it makes their life easier, then, then I think they should do it. And from the Houston Texans, DeAndre Hopkins, I talked to him at the NFLPA Rookie Premier event last week, I just ran the story this week, about his lesbian sister, his friendship with Calvin Klein's former boyfriend, Nick Gruber, and his support for same-sex marriage. What's really cool about Hopkins is the power that coming out has. He's obviously been affected by his lesbian sister coming out of the closet, growing up in rural South Carolina where he has spent his entire life. To have the perspective on gay equality that he does and his embracing of gay people, it's, it's pretty cool. So good for you both Andrew Luck and DeAndre Hopkins. I will only cheer against you when you play the New England Patriots this year. The third gayest sports story of the week features transgender MMA fighter Fallon Fox. Fallon came out of the closet as transgender back in March on Outsports and Sports Illustrated. And just last Friday had her first match as an openly transgender athlete. Of course, it didn't stop anybody on Twitter and Facebook and the internet and even in the arena from booing her and trying to take away from her loss. Here's what's interesting to me about the all the people screaming about Fallon Fox. On the one hand, they say that she's too good and it's not fair that she has a quote-unquote man's body and it's unsafe for her to be in the ring with people who were born female. On the flip side, they also say she's not a very good fighter and she's going to lose her next fight. So which is it? They're not really, they don't really have a legitimate argument against her. They just don't like the fact that she's transgender. But whether they like it or not, she's licensed to fight, she's gonna to continue to fight, she loves the sport, whether people like it or not. So I'm so happy for Fallon Fox winning that match, and I look forward to her winning um, for many years to come. The second gayest sports story of the week is Jalen Messersmith. He is an openly gay college basketball player at Benedictine College in Kansas. What's interesting is that we are now 2013. We've had an openly gay player in Major League Soccer and in the NBA. But Jalen is the first openly gay male college basketball player in the United States. What's so cool about Jalen is that he's Mormon, he's at a Catholic school, and it is, as I said before, in Kansas. 
All of these things should point to disaster, as a lot of people would say. But they didn't. He's been accepted by his family, he's been accepted by his friends, his teammates, and the school has totally embraced him. They're loving the attention that he's getting for them. So people are finally now seeing that it doesn't matter where you are or who you are. You can be a Mormon at a Catholic school in Kansas, and people still believe you should be able to play the sport you love and do your job. So great for Jalen. Keep it up. Look forward to next season. It'll be the, it'll, I think it'll be the first time anyone outside of probably the county will pay attention to Benedictine College. And the gayest sports story of the week, no big shocker here, Robbie Rogers, the openly gay soccer player who came out of the closet and retired in the same letter on his website back in February, took the field for the first time with the LA Galaxy on Sunday when they hosted the Seattle Sounders. The Galaxy went up 4-0 in the first half, and it was pretty safe to put even me in, in that with 15 minutes left. But they put in Robbie Rogers, and they made a bit of history. Their next game, uh, they went on the road to the Carolina Railhawks, which other than the Tulsa Drillers, the Railhawks has to be the gayest nickname out there uh, in sports. But other than that, uh, Robbie went, in, went to Carolina and was cheered. Uh, he has big shoes to fill. The team traded away their leading scorer, Mike McGee, to get Robbie Rogers from the Chicago Fire. So Robbie's got a lot of work to do, but hopefully by July and August he'll be tip-top form and, uh, and everyone will have, the LA Galaxy will have forgotten that they traded away their leading scorer to get him. If you want to see more really, really gay sports stories, go to Outsports.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Big Shocker, Outsports. You can follow me on Twitter, it's CYD. Z-E-I-G-L-E-R. I know my parents must have been smoking crack when they named me. And check back next week when I will have five more really gay sports stories. And I will do my best to not mention Tim Tebow or Manti Teo.